Hello, friends and fiends! Welcome to Bugs Need Heroes, a podcast illustrating the inspiring abilities of insects. I'm Amanda. And I'm Kelly. Before we get started creating a bug-themed character, what's bugging you, Kelly? Uh, I've got nothing to complain about this week, which is nice. I did rescue a roly-poly from uh, the hallway on campus today. Do you know what those are? Around in the the Pacific Northwest, we call it a roly-poly. I think they call them pill bugs in other places. They're like these little isopod-looking things. I'm not sure what they are. Yeah, yeah, they're, you're right. They're terrestrial isopods, so they're, they're actually little crustaceans, not bugs in the way that we usually think about bugs. Oh, yes. Who's got the fancy degree now, Kelly? Yeah. <laughs> it now? sounds like it sounds like you, Amanda. I think it's you now. <laughs> oh, yes, I've got my tiny cereal box diploma in terrestrial <laughs> isopods. <laughs> oh well, actually, uh, my my master's research was partially on. On those little guys, so I'm I'm a little little bit familiar with them. So roly poly, pill bug, potato bug, skaters, they have a lot of common names, like a ton. They're really fun. We should do a whole episode, I think, on roly polies. Oh, they'd make a really good tanky guy. Just roll up at a ball and run you over. I'm growing more familiar with them now because my three and a half year old. We're going on daily walks in this beautiful weather, and every time there's one on the sidewalk, he's got to stop and mess with it and i've always tried to encourage him to be like be soft be gentle you know but he loves to make them roll up in the little balls you know the way all all kids do <laughs> oh i think they're adorable um and, and not all of them roll up but i guess that's a topic for another podcast we're not here to talk about roly polies today we're here to talk about woolly bears which we mentioned last week on our mm-hmm, mm-hmm. podcast we mentioned that we used to try to keep them in shoe boxes. We used to try to make them little mansion homes, little Barbie dream houses, and it never ever worked out. That's that's adorable though. <laughs> <laughs> You would make them little, little houses. Oh, many a woolly bear lived a luxurious life until it starved to death in my closet. For sure. For sure. <laughs> uh, okay, ready? <sighs> woolly bears. <laughs> okay, woolly bears. So other than trying to keep them alive in shoe boxes, what's the deal with these little woolly guys? So uh, woolly bears are actually really, really fascinating. Um, do you know any of the folklore behind the woolly bear caterpillar? I, I really don't know anything about them, which is why I'm deeply interested to learn more. All I know about them is that they're little and they're fuzzy and that I used to see them all the time. And now I feel like I don't see them all the time, but maybe I'm not just hanging out in the woods like I did when I was a kid. So I, I really am starting from zero. What is the deal with these dudes? So the old farmer's almanacs used to use woolly bears to forecast the weather. It's been in the uh, American folklore system around the colonial times. So there's a doctor, Dr. Howard C. Curran. He's an insect curator at the American Museum of Natural History. And he did a study in 1948 trying to confirm their weather predicting abilities. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't. (laughs) didn't quite work out and there not enough data to, to to say yes or or no on the matter so I, I like to think that maybe they can still predict the the weather maybe they're just keeping those secrets to themselves yeah <laughs> i appreciate it everyone's got their secrets well and the way they so the way that they would predict the weather is by looking at their bands there was a narrow band then the winter should be nice and mild kind of snowy uh if it's a wide band then you're you'd have a harsher longer winter so this is the idea being that it's a new fresh batch of caterpillars every year. So they have different stripes depending on how they, how the conditions were when they were eggs. Well, so not necessarily. Um, so woolly bears, we, we've all seen them. They're, they're black and orange, pretty bright, very fuzzy. Uh, and that bandwidth, that orange bandwidth is what tells about the upcoming winter, but, but they're actually not fresh caterpillars every season. Uh, woolly bears can live for 14 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. And most of that is at a caterpillar, not as an adult. Oh yeah. Almost all of their life is, is caterpillar stage. Is that common of a lot of butterflies and moths that they spend most of their time as a caterpillar and a very brief time as an adult? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, their adult stage is the pretty much the shortest part and the saddest part of their existence. This is going to make me sound like the pleb I am, which is why I'm <laughs> on the podcast and you're in charge of the sciencey stuff. And as an adult, it makes sense that of course this caterpillar becomes a moth, but I've literally never considered that before, that the woolly bear is not like a complete animal. That it <laughs> moves on with its life into something else. And I've never thought about what that that other stage is. What does it move on into? Does like what does a moth from a woolly bear look like? I've never 
ever contemplated it. Oh, they're pretty. So, so this is the Isabella tiger moth. This is the specific species we're talking about today. And they're what a name. My gosh. <laughs> uh, already Isabella tiger. We're going Colin Vaccaro. It's me, <laughs> Isabella tiger moth. They're like, oh gosh, there she is. It does sound like a Marvel hero's full name, doesn't it? Definitely. So we're starting there. That's where we're starting with our hero this week. Oh, is yeah. She's Isabella tiger moth. <laughs> She's, uh, they're actually quite beautiful. They're yellow, orange in color, black legs, and um, little black spots on their, their wings and their thorax. They're a pretty moth. And I know generally we don't think of moths as pretty because most moths are pretty brown in coloration, but these are a little more brightly colored. Uh, just like our ladybug, it's for apospatism. They're toxic. They're toxic. The adult form mm -hmm. is toxic to anyone who tries to eat it. Right. The uh, woolly bear is as well. So it's got that orange band in it. I had no idea I was surrounded by all these nasty little critters all the time being like, don't eat me. I'm nasty. Don't eat me. I'm nasty. <laughs> oh, they're so cute, though. They are cute. They are a cute caterpillar. Like the, the monarch caterpillar is interesting looking, but I'm not sure I'd call it cute. But a woolly bear, that's a cute little bug. Yeah, yeah. I think they're pretty, they're pretty cute. Um, although you, you don't want to handle them too much because their hairs can be a little irritating for some people. So it's best not to pick up a woolly bear with your bare hands, which which you probably did as a kid all the oh, time. Oh, I, I <laughs> 100%. <laughs> I was handling those little buddies like they were my best friends. Did you feel any irritation or not so much? They are not fun to throw, Derek. Oh my oh, God. God. Our producer, no. <laughs> Please don't throw any of the bugs don't that we discussed. Throw them. <laughs> Do they bounce? Where are they fun to throw? They curl up into a little ball, and you can't throw them hard enough to hurt them or whoever you're throwing them at. So they just kind of harmlessly bounce. Oh, but they're they're experiencing stress, Derek. <laughs> they're yeah, still an animal. You say with this, stress I'm hormones. remembering you doing this. Like <laughs> as you've said it to me, I've gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did used to throw those bugs at me. What a rudo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty rude. <laughs> Uh, just a, a note a note to our audience, please don't throw the bugs that we discuss on the podcast. They have that on a sign at the, the bug section of every zoo is please don't throw the bugs. <laughs> so, so yeah, don't, don't throw them. They're a little prickly on your skin. Maybe don't pick them up. Uh, I think it's just good in general to leave nature where it is. <laughs> Observe from a distance. Unless you're like a little kid and it's worms. Just pick those worms up. I don't care about those. <laughs> Toss those in their... <laughs> Again, we're getting getting to another Earth, bug for another earthworms day. Earthworms are like, invasive anyway, so. Oh, are they? Oh, see, no these fun. are things we need to know for, for a, a worm episode. <laughs> Sorry, another podcast. Another, another, another episode. We're always... <laughs> Back to to the woolly bears, like, I guess. <laughs> I guess that's what we're talking about today. Yeah, so they do live most of their lives in their caterpillar form, um, which is about 14 years. And uh, what's really cool about that is in the winter, they freeze completely. Their little bodies totally freeze up, except for around their organs. So they produce this antifreeze-like fluid that protects them. So they freeze and thaw every season for about seven winters. Wow. So they just, they're just turning into little caterpillar ice cubes. Are they mm -hmm. underground? Or are they in a tree? Where are they doing this? They're uh, under something, under bark or under a rock, leaf litter. Whatever protects them a little bit from getting stepped on or eaten while they're frozen. It's a slow warm up. It's got to be about 50 degrees for them to start coming out of that. They're okay at about minus 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. So it can get quite cold. So what's the range of where they live? Because I know they live here in the Pacific Northwest. Sounds like they live there on the East Coast, the New Jersey-ish mm -hmm. area. Up, up into the Arctic. All the way up to the Arctic. Because my sister-in-law said she had never seen one before she moved. Mm. But that seems crazy to me that the Oklahoma wouldn't be a place where you could have them if they can survive such radical temperatures. Generally, when something is really cold tolerant, it's not heat tolerant. So it kind of goes one way or the other. That makes sense. <laughs> a snowmobile is really only good at the one thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, think, think of those little fuzzy snowmobiles. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that is exactly as I think. I'm like, there they go, those little fuzzy snowmobiles. So if we think about it, they're little, they're little eggs, right? And they hatch, and then they they've got to eat because they're going to spend 14 years as a, an adolescent. I have heard a rumor they are very, very hungry. <laughs> they are very hungry. <laughs> That they are very, very hungry little caterpillars. <laughs> they certainly are. They're going to eat through so many different kinds of foods. 
they they're actually very generalized in in what they eat. They really love herbs, what we would consider herbs, and dandelions, uh, stinging nettle. They'll eat tree leaves, other plant leaves. They are so hungry they'll eat just about anything. They're not like the to reference the monarch again. I can't. The monarch takes all of that butterfly street cred, doesn't it? It, it, it really it does. is like. I'm the one. I'm the king of the butterflies. And we'll get to those in another episode. I know the monarch butterfly eats like just the one plant. And that's why it's so easy to be like, oops, no monarchs anymore is because they really (laughs) only eat the one plant. But the woolly bears out there, whatever's around, it's going to eat it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're not particularly fussy about their food source. And a lot of a lot of caterpillars are not hyper specific to food sources, but the, the monarch is certainly in the other direction. They they evolved the other direction. Hold on. Sorry, I was doing drawings. <laughs> I, I lost my, my speaking. Yeah, give me a second to do some doodle in real fast here. Yep. Yeah, go for it. I feel like I'm just vomiting facts. <laughs> no, no, no. That's what we want. Isn't it? <laughs> well, I'm adding one last detail to this little woolly bear menace that I've drawn here. <laughs> ah, he's horrible. I like him. Ooh. I've drawn a sidekick character for our Isabella who is the oh. woolly stage and then she will be the moth stage. Oh, I love it. That way we can get, we can get some contrasting cuz caterpillars are just they're just so different. We talked about last time the glow up between larva and adult is just so huge. I feel like we can't do it for every insect but for woolly bear it's such a dramatic change. I feel like you got to do two different little dudes. And they're they're such an iconic shape and color that you want to you want to get that that caterpillar stage in there. Here, I'll share them to you in just one second here. Okay, here's a little woolly moth as yet uncolored. It just uh, looks like a child at a parka, but here it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> he's just out here living his life. He's got a huge mouth because he, he eats everything. And then he's fuzzy. That's literally the only thing about the woolly bear that matters. Is he eats everything woolly little dude <laughs> this is so perfect Amanda. <laughs> look at his dumb little face <laughs> well how many thoughts could he have really he's just oh, out here just food. his only thought is food nom 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 that's nom. what he says nom 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 <laughs> In the in a cartoon show about these two characters, that's all he would say. He wouldn't be able to speak. All he'd say is nom 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 nom. <laughs> we have to solve the crime, Woolly Bear. Nom 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 nom. You're right. We should take the upper the upper route. <laughs> it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. But okay, whoa, Woolly Bears. <laughs> so they spend all this time. Um, munch and munch and munch and as much as they can for seven seasons and then eventually it's time for them to uh, pupate which is just a fancy word for get ready to be an adult it's like caterpillar puberty but not as not as awkward they do remind me a lot of teenagers as they spin a nice little cocoon and then they stay in that cocoon for 10 to 15 days (laughs) just sleeping TMI town from Amanda a look into my <laughs> random life I actually slept in a cocoon for a long time what okay so I had a waterbed growing up and then the waterbed popped which is as traumatic as you think it is you wake <laughs> up soaking wet and cold and crying but my parents didn't get me a new waterbed right away so I just filled my bed frame with blankets and then I would what could only be described as burrito <laughs> myself into these blankets <laughs> at night (laughs) this is the kind of stuff you can do when you're a teenager as an adult all i could think is that would kill my back but as a 15 year old i was like "Mm, i'm so cozy in my little (laughs) my little hibernation i'm hiding underneath this leaf cover they'll never find me down here i didn't know you had so much in common with a woolly bear um speak so speaking of those hairs that's that's what they use to make the cocoon um so they don't really use They don't spin silk in the way that other caterpillars will use to to pull leaves on themselves or or make a cocoon that way. So they use their irritating little fuzz to create the cocoon. Do they shed the fuzz into a cocoon or they just pop off their skin? Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically. Oh, interesting. The whole metamorphosis of a a caterpillar becoming a butterfly is mildly terrifying (laughs) as almost everything in the cocoon liquefies before reforming into the adult. I see. I've heard that before. Like you think they go in there and they're changing, but in reality, they're completely liquefied. Like what happens to their brains and stuff? 
some neur- neurons remain intact. They remember predators. They remember things they should stay away from after the transition into adults. So, so some things remain intact, but mostly they're like a little goo puddle in this fur sack. Ooh, what a description. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <Ugh. laughs> they're a little uh, goo puddle in a fur sack. Ah, Like a wet burlap sack before becoming this beautiful moth uh, at the end of about 15 days. So after two weeks in this as a goo puddle, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Where, what do they do then? They come on out and what's their adult life like? Oh, their uh, adult lifespan is only about maybe 10 days. And uh, the whole purpose is to mate. So they come out, they find a mate, and then they die. 10 days of being adult, and then it's over. So they really are the opposite of the human experience, where we're only kids for a little while, and then we're adults. For really most of our lifespan, we're adults. But a caterpillar and associated Lepidoptera, I believe they're called. Yep, Lepidopterans. Also a great name. Uh, definitely sounds like a dinosaur, but a, <laughs> but a great word. <laughs> it, it does sound like a dinosaur. It's definitely 100% dinosaur. So, but they're the opposite. They, they're they kids for a lot of their lifespan, and then they're only adults for a little bit. Yeah, and the, and the whole, I mean, the whole point of being an adult is just finding a partner and um, mating and then laying eggs as soon as possible to start that life cycle all over again. I've heard that some moths don't have mouths. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. Family Saturnidae is almost, if not all, mouthless. Or they, some of them have mouths, but the mouths are so mangled, they, they just don't function properly. Oh. So they don't eat. They don't eat at all. That's sadness <laughs> i mean they spend so much of their life st- well i mean they, they spend so much of their life starving to death they gotta eat and then they become adults and they're like that's for kids that's kid stuff to eat with my mouth it's kid stuff that's for the baby so how do they find each other to find a a lady love as it were oh sure um pheromones um, they release pheromones. And what, what's kind of cool about that is so males, males release pheromones and the females start emitting this um, kind of clicking noise. Oh, so they could find each other. I, gu- I guess I don't think of moths as a noisy creature, but they're, they, they're noisy to each other. To each other. We can't hear it. It's not a frequency that humans can hear. Even if you put your ear right up to their little tummies, you still aren't going to be able to hear this clicking. Uh, and that's where the organ is. It's on like the underside of their abdomen. But they make this kind of really neat click to find each other. And it also has completely unrelated use. Um, they, they use it to deter predators. Oh. Confuse bats specifically. So, you know, bats are uh, use sonar to locate their prey, right? When the moths produce this clicking sound, it kind of has, it has two meanings. Uh, one meaning is I'm not tasty. I'm toxic. I'm gross. You don't want to eat me. And the other is, you can't find me. (laughs) It's confusing. (laughs) The clicking really throws off that sonar. So the bats aren't sure what direction it's coming from. Uh, So it's very neat. And I love when animals have multi-use organs or multi-use characteristics that don't just do one thing. So this is for sex. It's to let everyone know you're not tasty. And it's to confuse the hell out of bats who are hungry and would like to munch on you. But with the sonar for this species specifically, uh, I think scientists are not 100% sure that it's specifically for, for sonar jamming, but it has been confirmed in related species. Oh, So for the beautiful woolly bear, our friend the Isabella tiger moth, not 100% you know, confirmed on that, but but fascinating and, and I think a really interesting form of study. No, I definitely think it's, I, when you're a moth, it's you seem so delicate as a moth, right? The, the wings seem very mm-hmm. delicate. The fly pattern is often erratic to my eyes, at least. They're just all over the place. <laughs> so you, you got to find ways to live. Their flight is erratic. That's what does it, is the way that they just kind of like, whoa, yep. whoa, whoa, as they fly through <laughs> the air. I feel like they're really, they're barely airborne, a lot of these butterflies and moths delicate delicate animals like that of all the animals you could take out in a fight i feel like butterflies and moths <laughs> are really really <laughs> high on that list it. just one good punch and they're gone <laughs> we keep saying butterflies and moth is there a difference between butterflies and moth or is it strictly a aesthetic they're all lepidopterans so not uh, not really moths are generally we see more at dusk and in the evening butterflies are daytime moth antennae is usually a lot more fluffy um, when we think of butterflies we think of that straight the straight antennae sometimes with a little bulb on the end coloring butterflies are usually a lot brighter in coloration than moths moths are brown and um 
more looking to blend into the environment than advertise. Those would be what I would consider the the basic differences between moths and butterflies. Their basic structure is more or less the same, but their behaviors are what makes them different. Yeah, yeah. Their behavior, their coloration. Yeah, interesting. It's interesting to me that the moths and butterflies are not totally different. Oh, man. Uh, Let's see. So we did lifespan. We did clicking sounds. I think that's all the notes I have. Oh yeah, woolly worm is another common name for for woolly bear. Um, is woolly woolly bully a common name for them too? Woolly bully is the one that we called it. It it should be said. I <laughs> called them woolly bullies. I am somewhat notorious for naming things when I don't know the name of something. Oh, okay. I will just yeah. I heard Amanda say it. I was oh okay. That's no, I just make up. Wheel? So my it's just Amanda. Yeah, it's just me. <laughs> my little sister called the butterflies gilly gillies for a long time and so for a long time in our family we just referred to all bugs as gilly gillies so just don't trust anything i say when it comes to names because i will just see a thing and be like yeah that looks like a woolly bully (laughs) okay i gotta i gotta shrink isabella's head she's got a huge head is that hard to adjust or not because you're using not now that i'm in photoshop it would be harder to deal with if i was on paper i have a tendency to draw big hits Probably because of cartoonish heads. Yeah, because of my big old noggin. I always overestimate other people's (laughs) pumpkin heads. You look perfect Uh, as the ladybug. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, accidentally (laughs) self portrait as a ladybug. Oh well. All right. So to recap on this bug, eats everything. Mm -hmm. Irritating hairs. Yep. Can maybe tell the weather. Not sure. They live all over the place. Is there anything? else that needs celebrated about this little guy oh yeah um they're, they're so popular that in several states they have the woolly bear festivals and they're a really big deal a whole festival about one little dude one tiny fuzzy little caterpillar the one in ohio i think their website said it was the the biggest festival they have every year in the state just for woolly bears it's very cute any excuse to get together and have a party. Have a party. They do costume contests where oh your pet my or you. Gosh, I I need to Google this immediately. I'm looking at a photo right now from I think the Ohio website, and there's a tiny dog <gasps> dressed up as a woolly bear caterpillar, and it's it's a lot. So listeners, please Google this. Um, they also do caterpillar races at these events. I wonder, I don't know if money is being, is changing hands for this or not, but I, I would bet on them. I take back my judgmental tone at the beginning of this where I said anything for a party. I am fully on board. I am going to a Wooly Bear <laughs> Festival. This looks like a good time. I know. Now I want to find one. I don't think we have any in New Jersey. I, I got to find one now. Look at this little dog. Look at the dog, right? Oh my gosh. But it looks like uh, North Carolina, Ohio. I would imagine there's got to be some in the Pacific Northwest. I got to find one. Just just take a look out. Oh my gosh. The, I've fallen into a treasure trove of dogs and costumes. My biggest <laughs> weakness is dogs and costumes. Oh, is there anything we should include as a weakness for our hero character? Weaknesses. For the woolly bear, mostly just being in that adult form because moths are so delicate. They're just easy to to harm or eat if you're if you're brave enough. <laughs> is there weakness that they are uncontrollably drawn to all light sources the way that it seems to be in my house (laughs) yeah i would say that's an overall moth moth weakness i distinctly remember as a kid camping with some other girl so it must have been like at a forced camp where i was forced to go and we were like doing crafts in the middle of the night and a moth landed in the paint and then freaked out as you do when you're a moth and you land in paint and all around this cabin was just the flippy floppy impression of a moth trying to fly away but covered in paint and like to this day it remains one of the saddest things i've ever witnessed I'm just oh. like, help help i'm covered in paint and like how you wash off a moth you really can't that was a horrifying story I'm sorry. <laughs> feel free to cut it Derek, because it's not it's a real downer it's a real downer but i just remember it well because it flew to us oh. because of the light Right, yeah, because got stuck in the and it then, you know, life is cruel, and sometimes you get covered in paint and have to flop around. So we wanted to try this uh, segment where we rate our bugs out of six legs, and the moth has six legs. Yeah. Well, do you want to rate it once in its caterpillar form and once as an adult? Yes, I mean, as a woolly bear, as the little fuzzy dude, ten out of ten. Oh, I guess it, I guess it's out of legs. <laughs> six out of six. Great. 
<laughs> everything I'm looking for in a bug. Hungry, very hungry, and uh, very wooly. And you're not supposed to pick them up. So they can stay away from me, but they can be cute. Six out of six. Moth form, in general, moths are going to rate low for me. I'm sorry. They're just like in my face. Mm. They're, they're, their erratic behavior <laughs> is, is freaking people out. <laughs> I give up. I, I mean, they're such a pretty moth. As far as moths go, it's a pretty moth. And the name Isabella Tiger Moth is mm-hmm. choice. So I'm going to go on the merit of the name four out of six legs. I think that's fair. I mean, that's very fair. I, I think I feel the same way. As far as the woolly bear, the caterpillar form, six out of six. Top notch caterpillar. Adorable. People are throwing festivals in its name. You can't not rate that a six. I would feel like a jerk. Yeah. And then adult form, yeah, name alone, at least a three, maybe three and a half. Yeah. Otherwise, eh, I've seen more interesting moth forms yeah. than this. Yeah. Which hopefully we can talk about in other episodes, like the the Luna Moth. Listeners, look up the Luna Moth. They are very cool. I feel like that that's the moth. When people are going moth, they're going lunar moth. That's the one people like. But I say if you can dress your dog up as something, then it boosts its rating immediately. <laughs> I'm more on board if I can see a cute little dog dressed as your creature, whatever it is. Agreed. <laughs> and now we'll turn to our listener questions from Rebecca in Portland, Oregon. She asks, I used to see them all the time. Now I feel like I haven't seen one since 2003. Is there anything I can put in my garden to attract them? Oh, sure. That's that's a very specific date, Rebecca. Thank you for (laughs) for paying such close attention to the last time you saw a woolly bear. It was a journal event. (laughs) A journal event. (laughs) Dear diary. And I would write that in my journal. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. So luckily, woolly bears are really, like I said before, super generalist on what they eat. So as long as you have a really a garden full of lots of different food options, they should come. Um, Like I said, they like nettles, clover. Uh, I think plantain is something they really enjoy eating. Uh, Really herbate, like herby, herbaceous plants is is kind of what they prefer, but they'll also eat tree leaves. I think the important thing when trying to get them to come into your yard is leaving a good space for them to overwinter. So we tend to clean our yards a lot. We remove all the debris, fallen leaves, bark chunks, whatever. If you can leave a corner of your yard pretty wild, uh, a space that they can kind of hide for the winter months, that's probably your best bet on attracting them. And then they'll, like I said, they'll come out for seven, you know, seven seasons and enjoy your, the feast you've left for them during the springtime. That's a long time. You could really form a, an emotional attachment to the same you could. little bear. You could name them, I guess. There he is. My little buddy he comes out every spring. I hand feed him. I mean, we had a chunky ladybug. I feel like a chunky bug is a good bug. Oh yeah. Chunky bugs. They, they need that. They need to be chunky because if you're, if you can't eat as an adult, you need to store as much fat as possible when you're, we are young to get through that, you know, 10, 10 ish days. Proving once again that I am not yet, uh, I'm not yet an adult because I'm building that chunk. <laughs> Speaking of chunk, how's your, how's your drawing? Oh day? yes. Let's, uh, so I, <laughs> So I made the decision that we would have two forms and we, uh, you've already seen the beautiful form of Wooly Bear, Mm -hmm. uh, which has, I think, as far as power sets go, a lot in common with a hero known as Matter Eater Lad, who just can eat any form of matter. Oh, okay. That sounds appropriate. Yes. Yes. Given their diet choice. (laughs) Yeah. So Matter Eater Lad powers (laughs) for Wooly Bear. Anything could go in that gobber. For the Tiger Moth form, we uh, said that she'd have the weather control powers she is glamorous and fancy so for listeners listening i will briefly describe but make sure you check our socials for the visual companion to these episodes so you can see these quick little sketches as well and see what this character ends up looking like so she is a thin character because she uh is uses up all her energy as the woolly bear to become the mom <laughs> Uh, but she disguises that cleverly with a large draping moth wing cape. She has the dot pattern that we you mentioned on the tiger moth, which is so glamorous. The the black dots on the abdomen. Yes, the yeah. black dots and the wings. Uh, let me add. I'll have to add more black dots to her wings. <laughs> uh, she has their weather powers: arms out to control the weather glamorous sunglasses which some would describe as gaudy sunglasses i say glamorous what is fashion if not pushing the edges of good taste 
and she's got this dot pattern. Ooh. I've gone with the basic leotard form for a hero because that's that's the classic. You know, sometimes you got to stick with the classics. Reminds me of the monarch from Venture Brothers, right? With the the leotard. Oh yeah, the... we hadn't discussed that. There's there's some characters already based on on many. I think we talked about Miraculous Ladybug last week. Mm-hmm. I believe there's a monarch character in that as well. But I think on the American audience, it's Hawk Moth instead of Monarch. Oh, okay. Are there Marvel uh, Marvel or DC inspired heroes for butterflies? I really, I can only think of the Venture Brothers right now. I don't believe there's any for butterflies. There is a moth who's the killer moth. But he is a Batgirl villain and kind of a joke oh, villain, okay. if I'm honest. He's pretty uh, pretty useless. <laughs> he kind of just shows up as the Fireflies like companion in the Batgirl year one. Oh, okay. Oh, oh and Arthur from The Tick. Oh, course. yeah, of course. Of course. Arthur is the best moth, than, I think. Truly the that. best moth. <laughs> Oh, we're going to have to do a Tick episode now where we <laughs> where we unpack everything that's wrong with the Tick. Tick? Oh, oh well, we're, I think listeners are going to be a little grossed out by the Tick episode. <laughs> we'll save it. We'll save it for around Halloween time. Fair, fair warning for that one, yeah. Okay, so she has her weather powers. She has her beautiful cape. She has dots to make her so fancy. She has long hair that if you touched it, she'd be very irritated. You'd be very irritated. <laughs> Everyone's irritated by your choice to touch her. Save our copy. Oh, Amanda, can she have a bullhorn? Oh, because she needs to make noise? (laughs) Because they're clicking? Absolutely. Let's get some clickers. You you can say no. I I just thought about that. (laughs) Well, I just have to erase this hand. Hold on real fast. (laughs) It should be a sexy bullhorn, right? So the the edge of the bullhorn should be... It should have rhinestones. Oh, yeah. Rhinestones. I'm thinking the the bell part of the bullhorn is a set of lips in like a kissy motion. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Uh, That's perfect. (laughs) <laughs> this is why you're the artist <laughs> you know i went to art school to put kissy lips on uh on boards <laughs> uh, whoop. okay let me very quickly erase this little bit whoops i was on the wrong layer okay now i am saving and sending it over to the discord all right prepare your eyes kelly i'm about to pass this over to you oh i can't wait to see it prepare yourself all right i'm ready i'm ready for this discord will ever load all right here she is the one the only woolly bear and tiger moth (laughs) oh it's perfect (laughs) oh she looks she looks great she looks exactly what i what i would hope she would look like (laughs) (laughs) hopefully over time these characters will become less just the animal as a person but for now, I'm, that's the life I'm living, is straight one-to-one. One. Well, if, a, if a tiger moth was a person, here she is, Isabella. No, it's great. I, I love the the cape is almost um, poncho-like. That's very cool. I feel like I'd wear that, maybe. <laughs> well, you know, they, these days, capes, they keep trying to bring them back, which I am supportive. I think we should all be wearing I wish capes. they would come all the way back. All the I way. I want to wear a cape. Amanda, do you mean a scarf? I do mean a scarf. Of course, I do mean a scarf. Does Amanda not know the difference between a cape and a scarf? <laughs> it, is, it, it is, in fact, our mother who doesn't know the difference. So this episode is just going to be dips into the wacky world of Amanda. Okay, so dip into the wacky world of Amanda once again. My mother tried to order my sister-in-law a scarf that had a beautiful monarch butterfly wing pattern on it. But when it arrived, mm-hmm. it was, in fact, a cape. With, with like oh my hooks that you put on your wrist monarch cape? it was a monarch cape oh wow it was clearly labeled scarf because we immediately went to like mother's purchase history <laughs> like why did you buy her why did you buy her a cape and it was labeled as a scarf <laughs> but it was very clearly a cape and ever since that end time we see a scarf or a cape we purposely call them the wrong name it was such an honest mistake, and yet it was hilarious. And Mother tries to be a good sport about it, but she is not always a good sport about it. <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah. So if you ever hear me refer to a cape as a scarf or a scarf as a cape, that is what. Now, now I know. Now you know now the I deep know the lore of this cape and the, this, this cape. Well, she... well, Isabella looks fantastic. You've uh, you've done an excellent. She's job. on her way to the Met Gallery as we speak. 
She's beautiful. With her son, yeah. Wooly Bear, who will eat everything once they arrive. <laughs> Wooly, Wooly Bear is like, oh my god, I can't even look at him. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. He's my new favorite. He's great. I'm changing all the official art for the podcast to just zoom-ins of Wooly Bear's zoom. face. <laughs> I can't wait to get them up on social media. Nom, so, uh, nom, nom, nom. When, once the episode goes live, so everyone can see, nom, it's nom. too funny. <laughs> nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you next time. Bugs Need Heroes is created by Derek Conrad and Kelly Zimmerman, hosted by Amanda Allen Nide and Kelly Zimmerman. Bugs Need Heroes is produced and edited by Derek Conrad. Our music is Ladybug Castle by Roll Music. All art is provided by Amanda Allen Nide. Got a bug question? Email us at bugsneedheroes at gmail.com. Check us out on bugsneedheroes.com for the visual companion to our episodes with the artwork of the bug-related heroes. We also have an Instagram, Twitter, and subreddit under the Bugs Need Heroes name. Thanks for coming by. Being a real woolly bully right now.